Welcome, this is Ad Emmen reporting live from our 4 meter below sea level studio in Almere. Today I want to talk to you about hot chips. Hot chips is the major chip conference in the world. It's about hardware chips, the things that go into all computers. The um, conference normally takes place physically, but like any other conference uh, in these days, it has gone virtual. However, the chair of the conference uh, was happy to announce that there were, for the uh, first day, already 2,100 people who did register. So that was pretty good. And perhaps there are even more now. The um, things that I want to talk about is the three highlights of the first day. Well, actually, it's only three of the highlights of the first day. The first um, highlight is the Power 10 announcement and the details that we did get about the Power 10. The second thing I want to talk about is the uh, Thunrig 3, which is the uh, Marvel chip based on ARM. And the third one is the uh, Keynote by Intel. The um, session chairs also were at their home um, uh, uh, chairing and trying to direct the uh, presenters to the uh, right timing and things like that. So the first presentation was by uh, William Stark and Brian uh, Tomto from IBM. So this is uh, Brian Stark. And he actually started with explaining the whole roadmap of the Power family. So the um, current system is the Power 9. The new one is the Power 10, which was announced yesterday and then they're working already on Power 11. So some of the important things of the Power 10 are that it's seven nanometers. Um, it can have 30 or 60 core per socket. Um, it's uh, of course uh, energy efficient. One of the interesting things is the memory clustering and um, it uh, uses PCIe uh, generation five. This is what the chip looks like. The chip is produced by uh, Samsung, so it's 7 uh, nanometers technology from uh, Sam Samsung. Um, it has some increased computational capabilities, but also there's a lot of thing uh, going on in the open memory interface. So that makes it possible to cluster um, a course and to have a, a, a memory space which is uh, quite large. And as I said, it also has uh, PCIe Generation 5. Working on power efficiency uh, means that IBM is trying to increase the performance and also try to do some uh, tricky and interesting things with uh, energy management. So for instance, like um, taking care that the parts that are mostly used are getting the most energy and the other parts just get a little bit less, which can in the end lead to a lot of energy savings. Overall, it means that the uh, performance per watt um, has increased from uh, power 9 to power 10 with a factor of uh, 2.6, mainly due to uh, performance uh, improvements. The um, system is getting more and more complex, or I should say the core is getting more and more complex, the chips are getting more and more complex because the uh, bandwidth and the compute and the memory has to be in balance, which is only possible by managing all kinds of caches in the right way. The uh, system supports everything from 64-bit double precision to 4-bit integers. So the lower things are more used for AI. Actually, this is the most important slide for HPC people. So the chip, the Power 10, is an enterprise strength system with AI infusion, they say. Um, so that means that the system is designed, well, it, the chip is designed to be used in systems which are enterprise computers or cloud computers or that kind of systems. There is AI infused, so that means that there are some special 
instructions and accelerator like uh, uh, SIMD, uh, SIMD accelerators, which can be beneficial for AI. However, there's nothing mentioned for HPC. And also, the, it could be that it's still efficient, but also they didn't really talk about benchmarks for HPC. So it seems that it's, IBM is slowly drifting away from the HPC world, at, at least with this uh, chip. The second system I want to talk about, the second chip I want to talk about is the uh, Marvel Thunderic 3. And that was um, introduced by um, Robin uh, Sugamar from Marvel. He was actually talking about the uh, introduction of the, of the, uh, the Thunderix, which is not uh, quite there. It's not. It is still under development. But he started with the Thunder X2. The Thunder X2 is the current working horse from Marvel, and it's also the current working horse chip in ARM-based servers and large ARM-based systems. So he mentioned, for instance, that it was the first um, chip which made it into systems that were in the top 500. So the first uh, ARM-based systems in the top 500 uh, actually had uh, Marvel Thunderix 2 systems uh, chips in them. And there are a lot of other things. So it's basically the Thunderix is a working horse for big systems. The um, Thunderix 3, which will come in two flavors, is currently in the phase of um, uh, testing, so sampling. So the samples are there, but the system itself is not yet completely, the chip is not let yet there completely in production. An overview that uh, he did give is that there can be 60 core dice and there can be dual dice with 96 cores. The system is ARM version 8.3 based with some extensions possible. And um, one of the things to mention is that also that it has a PCIe, but then it's generation 4 and not generation 5. The system is produced by uh, TSMC, or, or the, the, the foundry is made by TSMC, um, which is the only company apart from Samsung that has this 7 nanometer technology. The um, last thing I want to talk about is the keynote. And the keynote was by Raja Kodri from Intel. And he talked about leaving no transistor behind. What does he mean by that? He, he, he said that, well, there's so many transistors on one chip these days, on one die these days, and you have to be able to to, to, uh, to let them all work together so that there are not transistors that are sitting there and doing nothing. He um, pre presented um, stand standing and walking around a little bit and had the slides behind him, much like I have now, which is um, a much more lively way of presenting. But in his case, of course, it was all very scripted and very much edited, but that didn't matter. It was a very good presentation, very nice to look at too. So he started, it's a keynote, so you have to start from the beginning, from digital everything in the 80s to network everything, mobile everything, and now we're in the age of cloud everything. And where will, will we go? We will go in the exascale for everyone era, very soon. Um, and in that era, we will have 100 billion um, installed connected devices in the, in the world. Um, there's still some problems to solve, like the, the memory wall, but well, we can do that, he says. He also wanted to point out that optimization is important. So, and that, 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 that you can see that in software, but it also holds for hardware. So in software, for instance, um, if, you, if you take this, um, mathematical um, calculation and you just dump it into Python, then it's running at a certain speed, which you may be happy with or not. But if you optimize it, you can quite easily get um, a 60,000 time performance increase. 
So it's important to look at optimization, adapting software to the hardware and vice versa. And he says that you also need to do that for the hardware, so not only for software. Of course, the basis of all this stuff is the explosion of data, and he estimates that somewhere in 2025 we will have we will produce something like 175 zettabytes of data each year, which is quite a lot. Moore's law. Everybody knows Moore's law is coming to an end, but Rachi doesn't quite agree with that. So Moore's law says that there will be an increase in uh, transistors per chip or per die, and, that, and we cannot hardly use them anymore. But there are ways to do that if you look smarter. You can, for instance, have stacked nanowires, what she says. You can make 3D dies, so stack everything in 3D, which makes the connections um, much closer together. And you can have all these kinds of improvements. And if you do that, then you see that in the future we still have a lot of uh, room for, uh, for improvements. Of course, being from Intel, he had to show a chip. So yeah, this is a chip from Intel. As I said, the uh, first part of his presentation was uh, scripted and he was walking around a bit and pointing at slides. In the time that was left, um, he did do a live part of his presentation. And then he was sitting down like most people um, and then interacting over the slides with a, with a more primitive way, let's say that way. So in that part, he was stressing the importance of having everything together and having a connection between the software and the hardware. So, and then also ranging from small sensors in the edge to the data center, which also means that you have to spend from flops to let's say extra, extra flops in the, uh, in, in the data center and that you have to um, spend power from, let's say, a few watts to uh, gigawatts in the data center. And you have to tie that together in as much transparent way as possible. And then you will reach the efficiency that you need. So the summary that he gave was, well, in performance and in generality, there's plenty of room at the top and there's plenty of room at the bottom and overall, he said, well, we can easily have a hardware performance increase of a factor of 1,000 by 2025 if we do all those things. He um, then answers questions from the audience. So the, uh, the, the chair did look at the questions that were written down in the Slack channel by the participants. And then uh, she translated that to questions in words, to the, uh, in audio, to the... Uh, presenter and then there was a, a, a relatively live discussion. So there was a, a, a very interactive moment at the end of each presentation. So that was the first day, was well, some of the highlights of the first day of Hot Chips. And we try to be back tomorrow with some news from the second day. And perhaps we also have some more highlights from the first day. So until then, this was Ad Emmen reporting for Prima magazine from our live studio in Almere.